Am I the butthole for smoking weed in my living room on the day that my two younger cousins visited? So here's the deal. I, 19 male, smoke weed all day, every day. It's just a normal part of my routine and I don't see anything wrong with it, and this is not something that I want to be judged on. My mom is completely against me smoking weed, and she's always telling me to stop. I believe that cannabis is nature's medicine and that society is oppressive to those who use it. It has helped me in so many ways and it upsets me that it's still stigmatized. My mom told me a few days ago that my uncle and younger cousins, 4 and 6 years old, would be over around 3 p.m. yesterday, and asked me to not smoke on that day. She always gets upset if she sees me smoking, so I didn't do it while she was home. She went to the grocery store in the morning and I figured it would be okay to blaze up in the living room with the windows open before my cousins showed up. Well as it turns out, my uncle and two cousins showed up early and walked in right as I was in the middle of smoking a joint and lounging on the couch in my underwear. It was a really embarrassing moment, and I'm sure my small cousins were shocked to see me like that. To make matters worse, they saw me coughing in a haze of smoke as they walked in. My uncle was upset and he screamed at me for smoking in front of the children and being irresponsible. He told me that I needed to grow up and start thinking about the consequences of my actions. I could tell that he was really disappointed in me, and the whole situation made me really frustrated. I know this was not a good situation and I regret that my cousins had to see me like that. But here's the thing, I don't think I did anything wrong. My mom told me the wrong arrival time, so how was I supposed to know that my cousins would be coming over early? And I don't see what the big deal is about smoking weed in my own home, as long as I'm not bothering anyone. If I had been told the correct time, this would have been avoided. TLDR, I smoked weed in my living room while my mom was at the grocery store and my uncle and young cousins showed up early. My mom gave me the wrong arrival time and I don't think I did anything wrong by smoking weed in my own home. You're the butthole. Regardless of your way of life, your cousins are children and should not be around smoke, regardless if it's weed, cigs, cigars, house fires, etc. Your mom made it clear and asked me to not smoke on that day. You smoked. You got busted. You're the ah. And you need to grow up, not because you smoke weed, but because you smoke weed all day, every day, and don't take responsibility for yourself or your actions. You're the butthole. If you smoke pot all day every day to the point that you can't stop for a day, let alone a few hours, then you have a problem. That's not a habit, that's an addiction. BTW overuse of any substance, including marijuana, can impact your still developing brain. Weed specifically also has links to certain mental illness. Your uncle is right, you need to grow up. I did anything wrong by smoking weed in my own home. Isn't it actually your mother's home? You're the butthole. Am I the butthole for ruining my brother's book? Okay so my, 21 female, brother, 18 male, has a collection of books, he has been collecting since he was around 10, he reads almost every day and has two large bookshelves in his room. I've recently started trying to read more and I saw a book recommendation online, I noticed my brother reading the same book a few days earlier and instead of buying one online I thought I'd just ask him if I could borrow his, he said he'd finished reading it and to go ahead but just return it when I'm finished. There was no problem with this on either end. Anyways I was reading the book in the living room, my brother came in, no problem. I folded the paper over to keep the page and as I was doing that he looked over and started shouting at me for bending the page, he grabbed the book from me and stormed upstairs and slammed his door, I followed him up to see why it was such a big problem but he continued to scream at me for ruining his books, I've always done that with books and I don't understand why it's bad, I get that he likes his books but geez. From one dog ear to another, you're the butthole. What you choose to do with a personal book, dog ear, write notes, crack the spine, is not okay to do to a borrowed book, especially if you know your brother collects books. Buy him a new copy. You're the butthole. From your response it's clear you do not treasure books as much as your brother. If you are borrowing someone else's belongings, you should be treating it better. Don't dog ear the books, and don't open the book so wide as to crease the binding. You're the butthole. I fold down the corner of the page, underline passages I particularly like, etc. but only on my own books. Books I borrow get returned in as close to the same condition as they were lent as possible. This should always be your goal when borrowing any item from someone else. Return it in the same condition you received it. You're the butthole not your book. You don't fold pages of books that don't belong to you. Now go buy him a replacement. Am I the butthole for calling out my aunt on Facebook, who was saying that they're cancelling family to explain the truth? I'm a 28-year-old woman and when I was a kid, my parents always hosted the family Christmas Eve party. 
This year, my dad was recovering from a surgery, so I offered to host at my new house, which I share with my girlfriend. When I was planning the party, I at first didn't really know what to do about my Aunt Marie. She's always been pretty homophobic, she'd always be talking crap about the gays when I was a kid before she knew. When I came out in my 20s she'd become really frosty to me and basically stopped talking to me. So when I was planning the Christmas party, there was no way I was excluding my girlfriend who's estranged from her own family, or putting her in a situation she has to face more bigotry. I also didn't really want to have my aunt over for my own sake, like I'm more used to it but it still makes stuff tense. And it was my own damn house. So I ended up inviting all the family except my aunt. My dad angrily confronted me about it, and I basically told him that I know he never allows someone who disrespects him or his wife into his home. Now I'm not a kid anymore, I'm as old as he was when he became a parent, I own my own home, and I'm going to be handling my household the way he raised me too, with respect for myself and my partner. He actually apologized for putting me in an uncomfortable spot when I was young. He planned a Christmas Day dinner with her and their other siblings. The Christmas Eve party itself was lovely. Well, on Christmas Day, my aunt posted this lengthy rant about how young people are cancelling Christmas and about her woke niece. It was super long and super out of touch, like there's no big conspiracy to cancel family or whatever, I just personally didn't want her there. I replied I assume this is about me not inviting you to the Christmas Eve party? Honestly, the holidays weren't cancelled, I just didn't invite you personally, as you have expressed hateful views towards me such as, I wrote a long bulleted list that is taking this way over the word limit here but some of the stuff on it was stuff like being glad AIDS killed a lot of, F slur. I said anyway, since I'm a lesbian and I share my home with my girlfriend, I specifically uninvited you due to your behavior towards me in the past. Nobody's cancelling the holidays, just you smile it's not some new woke trend either, a host choosing to only invite guests who respect them and their household has existed for as long as parties have existed. Well that blew the hell up, my family all started calling me and texting me and saying I went too far, it was enough to just not extend an invite but it was too much for writing a massive list of like 20 years of grievances. Some of my family was even saying it was crafty of me to list homophobic stuff she said before she knew I was gay? Am I the butthole for the Facebook comment I made? Not the butthole. If she wants to post her dirty laundry on Facebook, she better be prepared when the laundry starts to smell. Family means nothing when the people in it are the ones hurting you. Good for you OP. Not the butthole. In the words of the author and Lamont. Tell your stories. If people wanted you to write warmly about them, they should have behaved better. Not the butthole. She chose to take this to Facebook, not you. If she said and did those things she has to live with them and it's useless for the rest of your family to pretend none of this ever happened. Some of my family was even saying it was crafty of me to list homophobic stuff she said before she knew I was gay. She still said it, who called her out on it, regardless of whether or not you were gay. Am I the butthole for not doing my mother-in-law's breastfeeding exercises? This pregnancy isn't planned. I have trauma that makes it painful for me to have others see my breasts and no one can touch them including myself. I've been to therapy and the solution is then don't let anybody touch them. My husband has become obsessed with the idea that babies must be breastfed, I think he's getting it from his mom, and wants to prep me by getting me comfortable with it. I've told him the nightmare it will be if he does it to me and how it will make me feel like he's a danger to me. So his solution has been the idea of my mother-in-law doing it. It's wrong on so many levels to me but he's freaking out telling me I'm never going to live a normal life. I feel like nobody touching my breasts is more normal than my mother-in-law doing it. I could be biased on this because I'm clouded by trauma which is why I'm asking here. I know I can act crazy sometimes because of it but this seems totally unreasonable to me. Edit, just to clarify, it would involve touching my breasts fully clothed. Update, I'm sorry I haven't responded to most comments, but I'm very thankful for them and have been reading them. I'm sorry if I've offended anyone by not responding, I didn't expect to get so many responses and there's been a lot going on for me. Not the butthole. It's totally okay to bottle feed. Don't let anyone tell you differently. Don't feel guilty about it the baby will be fine. Your partner doesn't get to dictate how you use your body. Not the butthole. Fed is best. Meet with your OB slash GYN alone. Explain that you've had a traumatic history and you're going to need their support in preventing family members and the healthcare team from traumatizing you. A lot of standard care involves mom's breast area so you'll need to be prepared for what they'll suggest and be very explicit about declining it. 1. Ask them to provide letter you will share with your medical team and family explaining your 100% bottle feeding plan. Hospitals vary but many routinely send breastfeeding coaches or don't automatically provide formula these days. 
make sure your labor and delivery nursing team understands that you'll need support with bottle feeding. 2. A clear statement on your birth plan that you aren't to be offered breastfeeding coaching. The birthing team isn't to offer to place the baby on your chest after birth and no one is to touch your breasts. Your doctor may be able to suggest alternatives, holding the baby nestled between your arm and body after birth, etc. 3. A referral to a therapist who specializes in trauma-based care and anxiety treatment. While the history of your anxiety isn't in dispute, your future health will be more secure if you can find someone to work with to increase your tolerance for medical care around your breasts. Egg your milk will come in shortly after birth and you'll want to have a care plan in place for addressing any issues that come up while the tenderness is subsiding, if you run into blocked milk ducts or need future care like mammograms. 4. Ask the therapist to help you figure out the best way to hold and carry the baby, including practicing with a doll or stuffed animal. Many local baby supply stores offer a variety of baby slings and carriers that you can try on in the store. 5. Ask the therapist for help finding a couples or family counselor to address your partner's anxiety and his relationship with his mother. Am I the butthole for cutting my mom's allowance to pay for daycare when she couldn't babysit for me? Throw away for anonymity. Last year my husband, 35 male, and I, 34 female, had our first, and last, child. We were fortunate enough to be able to stay at home with him for almost a year by staggering our parental leave and vacations, but now that time has run out and we must return to work. I asked my mother, 56 female, if she would be available to watch him during the week and she said no. Fair enough. That's her prerogative. My husband and I researched daycares in the areas where we work and settled on one that came highly recommended. It was expensive though and that meant cutting down on expenses, like the monthly allowance that we'd been giving my mother. A bit of background to this. My parents were married for 28 years before my father decided that he wanted someone younger and sexier than my mother. For all of those 28 years my mother had been a Psalm then Sahu. With my father leaving, she was now meant to survive somehow in a world where she had never really worked because when they got married my father didn't want her to end, because she was raised in a traditional, religious family, she did what the head of household wanted. I'm not even going to go into that man's hypocrisy. Either way, he's gone and even though she got some alimony, she didn't press for as much as she should have, again that religious conditioning, and she's struggling. My husband and I have been supplementing my mother's income to a hefty amount every month which was not an issue until we had to put baby into daycare and found out just how expensive that was in of call area. In light of that, we told her that we would need to cut her allowance in half. We were not planning to start immediately but would take the financial hit for three months to give her the time to adjust and move things around. She got upset and told us that we were punishing her for saying no. I told her that was not the case but it is hard to maintain two households virtually by ourselves if we had to pay an exorbitant amount of our salaries to daycare every month for the foreseeable future. She was still angry and asked us to leave. Later my sister called us upset that we were abandoning mom and making her struggle just because she wouldn't do our bidding. So I suggested to her that she increase how much she was helping considering she still lives at home. She called me a freaking jerk and hung up on me. So Reddit hive mind, am I really the butthole here? ETA, I wanted to answer some recurring questions here. My sister's ability to help is limited and sporadic because she struggles with mental illness. It got much worse in recent years and we're working to get her on disability but that is a process. I guess that's why I feel bad about the comment I made to my sister because it was a moment of lashing out when I know that she's in a tough spot through no fault of her own. As for my mom, I will work with her to make sure that she can go back to work, especially given my sister's challenges. My mother is neither lazy nor a leech. Unfortunately she's been beaten down by being raised in a traditional culture and having it drilled into her what the duty of a wife is. She was then betrayed by everyone when her husband left. Not the butthole. You're not punishing her for saying no. You were being exceedingly generous to give your mother an allowance in the first place, but it's not your responsibility. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. And you're still being exceedingly generous to give her half. And if your sister isn't paying at least half of your mom's household expenses, mortgage, food, utilities, etc., then she's got nothing to say in the matter. Not the butthole you have a small family to take care of. Your mom, at 56, still has plenty of time in which to work. While she might not get a high-paying job, she could still get something unskilled, if she chose. Many employers take into account things like I spent my life raising my kids. That said, knowing nothing else about your sister's situation, it's hard to make a call on her behavior. Not the butthole. After the divorce, your mother needed to start supporting herself financially, info, you mean by still living at home, she still doesn't even have a job? 
Yes, a monthly allowance for a few months until she got back on her feet would have been fine, but not a permanent solution to her financial issues. Now that you have your own family to care for, your child is the priority, not her. She's parentifying you and acting like a child when you have an obligation to get daycare for your child, which she flat out refused to assist you with, despite you assisting her for however long financially. She's a major ah, uh, especially if she's sitting at home not doing anything to help herself, and personally, I'd cut her off completely so she gets a nice, big reality check. Am I the butthole for not wanting to go to my sister's NY's party after she overshadowed my engagement? So I'm a guy and I recently proposed to my fiancé about midway through December. We agreed to announce the engagement at the family Christmas party. My sister and her husband, who are both a couple years older than me, are also there. My sister and I have generally always gotten along, although her husband can tend to come off as a little rude at times, but he's never outright been a dick. So we do a little gift exchange, and at the end of it, my fiancé and I decide to make our announcement. So I say my piece, and everyone's excited about it. It was a nice moment that I was proud to have. Then my sister stands and holds up an unopened gift for our mother. Mom opens it, and it's a framed ultrasound image showing that my sister is pregnant, about a month along. It's a happy moment and I was happy to share in it. But after that, the pregnancy was all anyone talked about for the rest of the day, and the days after that. It was like they had completely forgotten about my fiancé and I being engaged. I felt like my fiancé had been cast aside. I didn't want to cause a scene at the party, because I was happy for my sister. Then every day of the following week, all anyone wanted to talk about was the baby. Finally, New Year's Eve came along. The party we have for that switches hosts every year, and it's my sister's house this time. My fiancé didn't want to go to that party because she felt uncomfortable. So I called them, and my brother-in-law answers. He asked me what was up, and I told him we weren't going to be able to make it. He tried to change my mind, saying you and your girlfriend can come along. Like he had forgotten, or hadn't even acknowledged that we were engaged. I reminded him of our engagement, to which he said he couldn't have known since everyone was so excited about the baby. I hung up on him then, and tried to just move on from it. Then my sister called and asked me why I was upset about her baby. I told her I wasn't upset about it. I said it hurt when our family seemed to care more about her baby to the point that my fiancé and I being engaged may as well have not happened because no one acknowledged it. She told me to grow up, and said it was selfish of me to avoid coming to a party because I was jealous of her happiness. I said that it wasn't that I was jealous, like I said I'm happy for her that she's having a baby. But while she's taking a step in her life, I'm also taking a step in my own life. I'm engaged to a woman that I love and that I am prepared to spend the rest of my life with, and it feels like no one has acknowledged or respected that. Afterwards, she said I was being dramatic and that people would be more than happy to care about it when the wedding happened. Then she said I should quit whining and come to the party. I told her that I didn't want to go to a party hosted by someone who wouldn't be as happy for me as I am for her, and I hung up. Edit, my anger was most definitely misplaced in this situation, it isn't my sister's fault that things happen how they did, and I should have handled the situation better. Edit 2, just so new people are aware, I have called my sister and we've both apologized to each other. I'm going to see her this weekend, so everything is going well. Info how were you upstaged when you had no clue that your sister was going to announce a pregnancy and no one knew you were engaged? You're the butthole. Your sister made no effort to overshadow your engagement. She had the framed ultrasound wrapped up as a gift before you even made your announcement in front of the family. The overshadowing was just your family's naturally greater excitement over the pregnancy. You've got no right to be salty over this. Grow up and be happy for your sister. Not the butthole. Initially it was N-A-H but how your brother-in-law responded when you called him makes them the Oz. Christmas may have felt like you got tossed to the side after your sister's announcement and I'm sorry that was your experience for you and your fiancé. I appreciate that you decided to just call to decline the New Year's invite rather than making a huge dramatic issue. Your sister and brother-in-law are off for their response. An engagement is a huge life-changing event just like a new baby which shouldn't be dismissed. Congrats on your engagement. Edit. Thanks for the kind award. You're the butthole, but just for the part of pouting that no one's celebrating your announcement. You could not have expected the announcement as much as she did not expect your announcement. Let's say the order of announcements was reversed, she went first. Would you have even made your announcement? And if yes, think she'd be reacting this way? You ain't happy for her unconditionally from the way I see it. Am I the butthole for walking out of an interview because I was unprepared and causing the referrer to get in trouble? I, F-18, 
live at home with my parents and attend community college so I can save up to transfer. My big sister, F21, also lives at home, but goes to a real college nearby, her words. I've been looking for a part-time job, and asked my sister if the restaurant she waitresses at has any openings. She said said maybe, but that was a few weeks ago and I never followed up. Cut to the issue, she came to my room last week and asked me if I wanted to get lunch with her, and I said sure. I assumed we'd just go through drive through so I wore fuzzy slippers, the outdoor kind, sweatpants, a HS t-shirt, and my hair was kinda dirty in a bun. I wasn't expecting to see anyone, we've only ever gotten fast food together. We only eat at sit-down places with our parents. We pulled up to a restaurant and I told her I wasn't really dressed for that so could we eat somewhere else? She said to not worry about it and we went in. She immediately went to say hi to her friend at the hostess stand, and left me with her manager. I thought it was weird that the manager was standing in the front, until she told me I was there for an interview? Apparently my sister did get me an interview but thought it would be hilarious to embarrass me in front of her co-workers by catching me off guard. I was so shaken, that I immediately said sorry, I wasn't expecting this, turned around and just left. At the time my sister died laughing and didn't say much, but apparently she's now facing consequences at work because her manager's really upset at having her time wasted and thought what my sister did was unprofessional and not funny. I don't think she'll get fired, but she had her hours reduced and a formal write-up. Now my sister's blaming me for making her look bad by not going through with the interview. Her friends have called me mean names making me feel horrible, but I'm so torn. I haven't told my parents yet, because I'm really embarrassed and I don't want to get in trouble. My friends are split between thinking I should have tried to be strong and finish the interview but others are supportive of my decision. I don't know anymore, I'm just really confused. Not the butthole. Your sister attempted to humiliate you for a laugh, and her boss reacted predictably to her unprofessional terrible behavior. Actions meet consequences. Not the butthole. It was your sister who put you in this position. She thought it would be funny to humiliate you. I find jokes about you funny. Why don't you find jokes about you funny? So how is it your fault at all? You didn't say anything bad about your sister to the boss. You simply left. And your boss saw how your sister was dying laughing. What did she expect? That you'd go through an interview you weren't ready for, knowing your sister was trying to humiliate you? Show this message to your sister. She should apologize to you, and have her friends that called you mean names, and what business is it of theirs? To apologize to you too. Avoid them in future. Be wary of your sister too, now that you know you can't trust her. Your friends are split? Dump those that support your sister. You were deliberately made to look like a fool. Anyone who can't see that you should keep at a safe distance. Hey sister, if I was your boss, I would fire you. What you did was mean and hateful, and I wouldn't want someone like that in my workplace. Learn to be a nicer person. You'll get further in life. Jokes at another person's expense, are not jokes. Not the butthole. Your sister fricked around and found out, and is facing the consequences of her actions. She is a total ah and you should not feel bad. I think you should tell your parents. Not the butthole nope. You didn't get the referrer in trouble. She got herself in trouble. She's trying to victimize herself so she doesn't have to acknowledge she was a crafty human being. You had no knowledge of the interview. Your sister purposely set it up that way to humiliate you. She behave unprofessionally. Do you see the pattern here? It all points to your sister being a cruel hateful unprofessional person. She deserved the write-up and reduced hours at work because she purposely made the conscious choice to waste her manager's time. That alone was enough for her to be reprimanded. Not to mention I'm sure it made the manager extremely uncomfortable and feeling awkward by your appearance and lack of knowledge of the interview. I'm guessing the manager probably felt horrified and embarrassed too. She's 21 years old. She's old enough to act like an adult instead of a 4-year-old. And truly, I know four-year-olds with purer hearts and intentions. She was just cruel and malicious. I'd definitely inform your parents about it. Even if they can't do anything about it since you're both adults, letting her get away with her bad behavior by hiding it from them is never going to help her and only enables her behavior. She will continue to emotionally abuse you if you don't set boundaries and refuse to tolerate her abuse.